52, O Blessed the House. O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the the sojourner who is within your gates. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. The people stood far off, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is written in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother, mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your word is a lamp to In the name of Jesus, amen. Honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so far through this series in our Vespers service, we have studied the first three commandments. All three of those first commandments direct us in our relationship toward God. They taught us to fear, love, and trust in God above all things, to call upon his name in prayer and praise rightly, and, of course, to devote ourselves to worship, to gathering together as God's people in God's house to receive God's gifts. Now here today, the tables shift. 
we turn to the last seven commandments, which are all directed toward our neighbor, toward others, toward each other. First, we live in faith toward God, as the first three commandments tell us, and then we live in love toward our neighbor, as the last seven commandments show us. This love of God and love of neighbor summarizes the command of God. And as we begin this second table of the law, we are immediately greeted with the order that God has importantly built into his creation. There is an order. There must be. And the order is topped off with the most important walk of life, the highest position of honor according to our God, and that is given to the estate of fatherhood and motherhood. For here in this commandment, we are directed not just to love our parents and other authorities, but to honor them. This puts the order into perspective. It shows us how seriously God takes this all-important station of fatherhood and motherhood in our lives. Dear friends, without parents, none of us would be here. They are tasked by God with raising, caring for us, and providing for all of our needs. Without someone there to guard and keep us, no one, not one single person, would make it out of infanthood or childhood. Our earthly fathers and mothers are there to give us life and to nurture us and care for us as we grow. In doing this, they give us a little glimpse of God. The very God who is called our Father, our Heavenly Father. The fourth commandment is there to protect this all-important picture of God, ensuring that we honor, serve, obey, cherish, and love our earthly parents. We break this commandment when we don't listen to our parents. And not just as children, but even as adults. When we neglect our parents, when we become upset or angry or despise them, when we throw tantrums against our parents, whether they be while we stop, stomp around in our diapers or stomp up the stairs to our room or even stomp away from the plans for Thanksgiving. Failing to honor our parents in all things is breaking the fourth commandment. It does not honor God or this important order that he's built into his creation. And it doesn't follow Jesus. The Jesus who knew, as we saw in our gospel reading, that he must be in his father's house about his father's business, doing what his father had instructed. And so far, the fourth commandment, though we know we've all disobeyed our parents at times, doesn't seem too difficult. But, dear friends, before you get too comfortable in those pews or in your couches at home, this commandment talks about more than just mothers and fathers. This is about the estate of fatherhood, the estate of motherhood. This talks about all authority given in our lives. For all of those placed over us are placed there ultimately by God to serve his creation, to make sure that order is maintained amidst the chaos. And so we don't just break the fourth commandment when we get upset or angry at our parents or fail to listen to their advice. We also break it any time and every time that we dishonor, disobey, or dislike the many authorities in our life. This is where the fourth commandment really grabs hold of us, really shows us our sin. When we get upset at the fatherhood that we call our government, when we make jokes or ridicule those politicians placed in office to serve us, when we disobey them, when we denounce them, when we sin against, then we sin against God's order and the picture of himself that he's built into life. And to apply it even further, and to tell you my own deep sin, this really gets to the core of the matter, when we think about simple things like speeding on the streets when we ignore the authority's proclamation that on this road you shall go no more than 35 or 45 or 65 miles an hour, when we ignore it, we are breaking the fourth commandment, telling ourselves that we know better than anyone else, that we know better than those authorities placed over us. This fourth commandment really is hard for us to keep because at the end of the day, none of us want to answer to anyone else. Certainly not to someone who shouldn't be in office because we think they are unfit. 
Certainly not those who think I should only drive 65 when there's such a nice, open, straight country road in front of me. Dear friends, we disobey and dishonor thinking that we know better thinking that the authorities aren't in charge of us or our lives, but that we are. Like all the commandments, we ultimately fail to keep this one because we think mostly and most often of ourselves and not of others. And so God calls you to repent. He calls you to see and rejoice in the many and various authorities in life, to see them as simple, small, little glimpses of your reality with God. So whether it be the president, the governor, the congress, whether it be your boss at work, or the basketball team coach, or yes, even the referees, whether it's your pastor at church, your supervisor at work, or the police officer in the street, God has called you to honor them, to serve and obey them, to love and to cherish them. For just like with your mom and your dad, God has given them to you so that your life may go better, so that you may in fact live longer. This commandment is the only one that has such a promise attached to it. That your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. That's the promise God lays on the fourth commandment. And it's not some kind of magic. It's not a special supernatural gift that you get for keeping it. This is simple cause and effect. When we obey the authorities, life goes better. We live longer. If a child is playing in the middle of the street... Mother and father know better, and they will go and grab hold of that child and scold them to keep them from playing in the street, to tell them no when they need to be told no. And when mom and dad are listened to, life goes better. Your days are, in fact, longer. So, dear friends, whether you are a child who is commanded to obey your mom and dad, or whether you are a citizen commanded to honor your government, or whether you are a worker commanded to cherish your employer, hear the command of God today and rejoice in it. For all the many times that you have failed, for the anger, the disobedience, the despising that you have harbored in your heart toward the authorities, flee to your true Heavenly Father. For with that true Father there is forgiveness. With him there is strength to live rightly with the authority. With him there is the promise of order in the midst of chaos. And more than that, there's the promise of his order eternally in that house, that house of your father that has no end. In the name of Jesus, amen. We now join together and sing our office hymn number 581. These are the Holy Ten Commands. We'll sing stanzas 1, 5, 6, and 7, 11, and 12. That's 1, 5 through 7, and 11 and 12. Oh, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, you know the shock and fear and sorrow that the events of these days have spread across the land. We are helpless before the evil and division that afflict us, and therefore cry out to you for comfort, shelter, protection, and healing. Mercifully embrace the frightened in your love. Empower the weak and abused with your strength. Restrain the wicked by your might, and preserve the righteous in your grace, giving us your peace and turning tragedy and oppression into triumph and unity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, Amen. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Strengthen us in faith toward you. Give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer, and comfort all that mourn. Sustain in their labors all medical personnel and all whose vocations serve our bodily needs and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Grant that the fears and anxieties of this mortal life may not separate us from your love shown to us in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Uh, just a couple real brief announcements. A reminder for the two upcoming Bible studies this week. Uh, one is tonight at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, and that is the book of Hebrews. And then we have uh, 1 and 2 Peter tomorrow at Thursday. Uh, come to one or both of those. They are fun uh, fun fellowship and time in God's Word. Also, Sunday mornings, or Sunday at noon, we have a uh, abbreviated divine worship service still going on. There's still some slots left. We've been averaging about 20. It's limited to 30, so if there's anyone out there that you know of, uh, please contact us so we can get a hold of them and get them signed up on the list so they can also come and receive God's Word and the Lord's body and blood for the forgiveness of their sins. Uh, with all that said, let us go with the rest of our day in God's peace.